Hey guys, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to do a little bit of a pregnancy update though this one is going to be a little bit different than anyone I've ever done on my uh, channel here. I don't even have any notes or anything. I'm just going to kind of talk off the cuff here a little bit. Uh, but today is February 29th, 2017 and I am currently 29 weeks and three days pregnant. Uh, so if you follow me on Instagram, you might have a little bit of an idea of what's going on. But if you don't, um, I will have my link listed down in the description box if you want to go ahead and follow me over there. Uh, but if you have not followed me and, and you don't know what's going on, this will be um, a little bit of news for you if you really care. Um, but last week when I was 28 weeks pregnant, I was diagnosed with gestational diabetes and it has kind of been, I don't know if I want to say like a whirlwind of a week, uh, but it has been an interesting week, that's for sure. Uh, and I'm not going to lie, uh, it's kind of sucked. And then of course on top of the gestational diabetes, I have been dealing with my hypertension issues since the beginning of my pregnancy. Um, I did have the hypertension issues of course when I was pregnant with my first child, uh, though I did pass the glucose tolerance test, so I did not have gestational diabetes when I I was pregnant with my son. I did uh, fail the one hour test with him, but I passed the three hour test. Uh, but this time around, that was not the case. Uh, last week when I was 28 weeks pregnant, I went in for my glucose tolerance test, um, which if you're not very familiar with what that is, uh, basically all you do is you go in and they draw some blood from you and then they give you this nasty, nasty drink. And I remember the drink being so much worse this time around than it was last time around. Um, I've switched providers so they could just have a different kind. Uh, but this, it was so sweet and so sugary and it was just like, it's like a syrup basically that you drink. So after they draw your blood, they uh, they give you this drink that you have to take and or that you have to drink within a few minutes. And then you wait an hour and then they draw your blood again. And based on the readings of what, however they test your blood, um, the number that they're looking for is either 130 or 140, I think. What I don't remember exactly what it is. Uh, but apparently mine was 199, which is very, very high. Uh, so they called me with that news and of course I was like trying to hold back tears when they were telling me all of this stuff on the phone. I was so overwhelmed. Uh, and so of course I was like, can I take the three hour test? You know, can we see? Uh, Cause they had basically just told me that I had gestational diabetes. I was like, can I take the three hour test? Like I had to do it with my son, which is no fun. You have to get poked so many more times. And you just have to waste, you know, four hours of your life basically sitting in a doctor's office. But at that point, of course, I wanted to take the test and they said, you're gonna fail it. There's no way you could pass that with a number like 199. Uh, I guess the three hour test is, you know, just basically for, for people that are kind of on the cusp of passing the, the glucose tolerance test that didn't quite make it. Like that's what happened with me last time, but they said there's no point. You just have gestational diabetes. You need to make an appointment with a nutritionist and hopefully you can keep it all diet controlled. So then with gestational diabetes, and I would imagine with any kind of diabetes, um, speaking of which, you know, I've only been doing this for a week now, uh, but my heart goes out to anybody that has to deal with either type one or type two on a daily basis, you know, for years and years for their entire life. This is no walk in the park. It is just, there's so much information that you have to remember. So my heart really goes out to anybody that's been doing this for a really long time. But basically with gestational diabetes, the first line of defense is to change your diet. Um, so what's happening in your body with gestational diabetes and, and the problem from what I understand is the placenta. It's not processing uh, food properly for you or it's preventing you from processing food and specifically sugars properly. So it's causing your blood sugar to go up. And uh, again, from my understanding, once you deliver the placenta after you give birth, you don't have gestational diabetes anymore. Um, of course, this could be an underlying problem that I didn't know that I had and I will have to continue to stay on this diet and possibly go on uh, medication and then insulin or whatever. Hopefully that's not the case and everything um, will be fine. And of course, um, I think like six weeks after I uh, give birth, you know, at my regular checkup, I will probably have to do another kind of test to make sure that I don't have this um, as an underlying problem. But um, so the first line of defense, as I said, is to of course change your diet and you really do have to watch your carbs and you can only eat a certain amount of carbs per meal. Um, in the morning you can eat less, at least this is what my nutritionist told me. And again, I am not a nutritionist, I'm not a nurse, I'm not any kind of medical professional. So if you're looking at this video, trying to get some tips and tricks and ideas, maybe you were just diagnosed or something, um, talk to your doctor and your, your nutritionist for official instructions on how you should deal with it because I'm sure everyone is different. So I'm just kind of giving some 
anecdotal advice here, I guess, or some anecdotal information about how I've be uh, been dealing with this. But so for your carb intake, you know, it kind of varies per meal and per snack. You don't have to be completely zero carb, at least at this point, I don't have to be. Um, but in the mornings, I feel that it is a little bit trickier, especially right after you wake up, um, just because your body's been out of whack, sleeping, you know, your whole sugar thing is kind of uh, off and you're going from very low blood sugar in the morning because you haven't eaten anything for so long to eating, you know, usually, you know, if you eat a like, pancake or a toast or something, your blood sugar will spike. And mine, especially because I have this gestational diabetes, will spike very uh, high, very fast. So I've had to be very cautious about what I eat and I've been trying to eat a lot of cheese and a lot of eggs in the morning and that seems to work really well for me. Fortunately, I can drink my Keurig coffee pods that I really like. Those do are sweetened. There's a little bit of sugar in there. I think they have nine grams of carbs and I can do that and then something more protein based and my numbers have been okay. Um, and then throughout the day as I go on, um, I've noticed I have been able to eat a little bit more uh, carbs each meal and my dietitian did set out, you know, a specific number of carbs that I should eat at each meal. I've been realizing not all carbs are created equal um, and that's kind of hard because today my blood sugar actually spiked after lunch after eating some chips um, and the number of carbs was within my guidelines but I'm thinking because the chips weren't whole grain, they're not, you know, that healthy for you, um, that I can't get away with eating as many of those as I could, maybe like a whole grain sandwich or something, um, even if it was the same amount of carbs. Um, and I've heard that from other people that have had gestational diabetes and been reading online that that is kind of the case for a lot of people. Uh, so, you know, it's really at this point, because I'm still only a week into this, is a little bit of trial and error. And of course, I'm trying to uh, keep my blood sugars as low as possible, you know, between each meal. And I have not had hardly any, uh, any kind of treat, like a uh, sweet kind of thing at all the last week. And that's really hard because if you've watched my other pregnancy vlogs this pregnancy, you know that that's what I've been craving is sweet stuff all the time. Maybe that has something to do with uh, why I got gestational diabetes this time. I don't know. I mean, probably not because I wasn't like gorging on sweet stuff really, but that's definitely what I've been craving and what I've been wanting to eat. Uh, but I can't do that anymore and it's really, really difficult. So then now, of course, because I am a diabetic, I do have one of these little things. This is a glucose uh, monitor, I think is what they're called. And I do have to check my blood uh, four times a day, which is not fun. Once right when I wake up in the morning and then after every meal. Um, and this is the actual thing that actually pokes my finger, which is really not fun, but I've gotten used to it and it doesn't hurt that much. Um, it's just kind of the anticipation I've realized is what I really don't like. I'm just kind of like, as I'm holding this thing like right up there, I'm like, Aah. and then it's fine and it really doesn't hurt that much. Um, and if you are just starting out in this journey, whether it's you know type one, type two, or gestational diabetes, um, I had absolutely no clue how to use this thing the first couple of days. It was really, really difficult. Um, so let me give you a couple of little pointers that my nutritionist or my dietitian gave me. Again, I'm not a nutritionist, dietitian, any kind of medical professional, but this is pretty good. I think this is pretty good advice. Um, wash your hands, of course, before you uh, lance your finger uh, in warm water to kind of get the blood flowing. And then what my dietitian told me is to massage your finger. I'm not trying to flick you off, but this is just the finger that I usually uh, lance. Um, massage your finger a little bit beforehand because before she told me any of this, I was poking myself like five or six times just to get a tiny little drop of blood and I was wasting so many testing strips because I wasn't putting enough blood on them and it was just a mess. It was horrible. Um, but after she kind of helped me out, I've only um, had to use one test strip per time that I do it, which is good. Um, and it doesn't hurt nearly as much because I've only had to poke myself once. Um, so again, uh, after you or before you poke yourself, go ahead and massage your finger a little bit, then poke yourself. You know, you're supposed to poke yourself right here on the side of your finger and you could do any finger really and you could do any side. And then my initial reaction was as soon as I poke myself was to just squeeze right where I poke. And she said that you want to start from the base of your finger and massage up again. Um, and that'll really start to get the blood flowing. Even if it doesn't look like you poked yourself hard enough and there's no blood coming out initially, start massaging yourself from down here. Um, and then it'll, it'll come and you'll be able to kind of control how much blood you need to get out. So you get the perfect amount. So you're not gushing, which definitely happened to me the first couple of days as well 
well. Um, it's just, it's been so much easier. I'm, I'm so thankful that my doctor made me go see the dietitian specifically so I could learn how to use this thing because I had absolutely no clue. Um, but so then of course, if you cannot control your blood sugars through your diet, like if even if you're eating like absolutely no carbs, your sugars are still sky high, um, you probably will be put on some kind of oral medication. So that would be the next line of defense. I'm hoping that I don't have to go there at all this pregnancy. Of course, nobody wants to have any extra medication and I am on a hypertensive or on a hypertension medication already. Um, but I think the one that I've read about the most is called metformin. I could be wrong, but that seems to be the pregnancy safe one. And then if that's not enough, then uh, you will have to go on insulin shots, which scare me to death. I do not want to go on insulin. I cannot imagine having to give myself a shot every single day or however many times a day you would have to give yourself the insulin. I'm honestly not sure how it works and hopefully I won't ever have to find out how it works. Um, you know, this thing is hard enough for me to do, like actually putting like a bigger needle in there and you know, ugh, gosh, that just sounds horrible to me. But of course, if that's what it comes to, then, then we will do it. Um, and then as far as when I'm going to give birth, uh, who knows? I mean, really it's still up in the air. I've not seen my doctor since I've been diagnosed, so hopefully by the next appointment I'll get a whole lot more information. With my son, I did give birth to him at 36 weeks because of my hypertension, which has been okay uh, so far, uh, but because I also have the gestational diabetes this time around, I'm thinking um, even if I do go past 36 weeks that I probably, they will not let me go past 38 if I manage to make it that far on my own. Um, so I'm thinking at this point I have less than 10 weeks left which I'm really hoping because this just has not been a walk in the park for me. I'm also seeing a physical therapist for my uh, back issues. Uh, so I have a lot to deal with right now. And of course, I'm so thankful that I was able to get pregnant very easily and that um, I've got this wonderful uh, new life inside of me, but I'm just really ready to be done. I've got to be honest. But like I mentioned earlier, the problem most likely lies within the placenta. And once I pass the placenta, uh, then I won't have gestational diabetes anymore. But when when my daughter is born, they will be uh, checking her and they will have to poke her quite a few times uh, from what I understand in the first 24, 48 hours, however long, um, just to make sure that her blood sugars are okay, to make sure that she's, um, that they're not too high or too low or, you know, however wonky they might be, I'm not quite sure, um, which sucks. I'm not looking forward to her having to go through that, but she'll be one day old, two days old, she's not gonna remember it. Um, and of course, it's for her health and safety uh, so that she can you know, get the best care that she needs. But the, the, I know that's gonna be hard for me to see or, or in here, because I'm sure she's gonna scream and cry, but I'd rather her have to go through that um, and rather than have some kind of problem not be diagnosed. Oh, and then also, if you have just been diagnosed with gestational diabetes, uh, you will start getting more ultrasounds. Because I do have the hypertension problem, I've been getting extra ultrasounds since I was 20 weeks. Like I had my regular 20 week one, and then I had 24 and 28, and then my next one will be, I think, at 32 and then 36 if I make it that far. Um, then that was all just scheduled because of my hypertension. But now we're looking for signs of problems with the diabetes. Um, and it's kind of funny because hypertension can make babies too small um, and they kind of can restrict growth and gestational diabetes can make them too big. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that, you know, there's a happy medium in there for, for my baby, but by, based on the last ultrasound that we had just a few days ago, she's measuring quite large. Uh, she was, I think, at 28 weeks and six days, she was already about three and a half pounds. Um, and of course those I don't think are ever very accurate, but that just sounds huge. And based on what I've read for a 20 weight, for a 28 week baby, they should be measuring about two and a half to two and three quarter pounds. So she's already quite large. Hopefully, you know, now that I have everything under control, her growth is not going to be huge. And by the next time I go in, uh, in like three weeks for my next ultrasound, she will have slowed down a little bit so she's not quite so far ahead in her growth. Um, because that can be a little bit dangerous too. And of course that could prevent me from having a vaginal delivery and you know, can increase the, the need for a C-section just because uh, the babies are too big, you know, especially the, the further along you get in your pregnancy. And then just one last thing that I wanted to touch on, even though presuming that as soon as I deliver the placenta, I don't have gestational diabetes anymore, I am for the rest of my life uh, much more 
high risk for uh, developing type 2 diabetes as well as my daughter is, which I have a really, really hard time um, dealing with that, and that I think has made me the most upset over anything. I mean, the diet sucks, you know, because I can't have just whenever, I can't eat whenever I want. I have to stick on a, you know, tight schedule and eat only specific foods and stuff, but because she's already starting out her life with a higher risk of something that she has nothing to do with, that's really, really what what um, ha has caused me to be the most upset over having this. Um, but there's nothing I can do, and of course, you can decrease your risk of getting type 2 diabetes by having a good diet and exercising and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully, um, you know, I can instill in her that uh, you know that that's the way to live your life is to have a healthy life uh, with good food and exercise and stuff. But um, I just feel terrible. I'm not gonna lie. Um, there's no, really no way around it uh, you know I'm I'm giving her a higher risk of developing a, a horrible disease um, and and I I just you know hope every single day that she doesn't ever get this and of course I, I don't want to develop it later in life as well then going forward like I said at six weeks or so I will have to retest uh, and then I guess every couple years I'm going to need to retest as well I'm not sure if my daughter will need to retest or test herself or if there's ever going to be a need for her to test before she ever you know has babies or anything I, I don't know about that but my nutritionist said every couple years I'm assuming just with my general practitioner I will need to probably just take retake the uh, glucose tolerance test, which kind of sucks. But again, you know, it's better to know and take that test and be bored for an hour in a waiting room and, you know, then start to live, you know, within the parameters of gestational or of a type 2 diabetes than go undiagnosed because I know it can cause a lot of problems later in life if you don't uh, have it diagnosed. So I know this was kind of a weird kind of video for me, but I really just wanted to talk about this because it's very scary. And if, again, if you're somebody that's just found this video of mine because you've been diagnosed with gestational diabetes or you're thinking that maybe you're gonna be diagnosed, um, it's manageable. At least for me at this point, it, it, it is manageable with my diet and it sucks and it's not fun, but it, it could be worse. You know, when I first started doing some research, I thought I was gonna be able to eat like absolutely no carbs at all. All. And the other day we went to Steak and Shake and I got a double cheeseburger. I ate both the buns and I was fine. Um, I didn't have any of the fries. I did have a salad with it, but that was within my parameters. So um, I actually did the same thing with Wendy's the other night as well. Like I had a double cheeseburger and a salad and my body didn't like Wendy's. I was okay at Steak and Shake, but I was a little bit high with Wendy's. So you do kind of have to watch where you go and stuff, but um, it's manageable. It is. Um, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Or if you have any advice for anybody else, you know, feel free to leave those in the comments below as well. Um, and I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. I do lots of different beauty kind of videos, and I've been doing some more regular kind of uh, pregnancy updates on my channel as well. And I post bump pictures over on my Instagram every Wednesday, so I will have that link down below, and you can go check that out if you'd like. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. If you are just newly diagnosed with gestational diabetes, try not to beat yourself up over it. I know it's really, really hard. I know I have done my fair share over the last week, but it's really nothing that you have done or that I have done. Um, and it, it just sucks that we now have to deal with this really for the rest of our lives because we're dealing with this now during our pregnancies. But it is what it is. We'll all get through it. Um, and I just wish you all the best of luck if it's something that you're dealing with and know that you're not alone. Uh, but thank you again so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.